Now, if uh, this circular motion remains aimed at a pendulum, then we conclude that the pendulum could be here at the very beginning of the motion. At its extreme point, we're here. After moving, well, the point is moving around this circle. We're moving around this circle. Remember, this circle is moving at a uniform velocity, so that we're going to go from 0 to 30 degrees, then from 30 to 60, from 60 to 90, 90 to 120, and so forth. We're going to go through 30 degree intervals in equal time intervals, so that in the first time interval, we're going to move from here to here on the circle, which is going to correspond to the pendulum moving from this position here to this position here. In the next equal interval, we're going to move from the 30 to the 60 degree pendulum, which is going to move the pendulum to here. During another 30 degree interval, the pendulum is going to move all the way to here. And then in the next 30 degree interval here, next 30 degree interval here, next 30 degree interval here. So in equal time intervals, the pendulum moves from this point to this point, fairly short distance, then from this point to this point, a greater distance, from this point to this point, an even greater distance, and then uh, what should be an equal distance on this side and a shorter and a shorter distance, meaning that the pendulum starts out slowly, speeds up, speeds up, slowly, and slows down and ends at this position before coming back through the same positions. The pendulum is moving faster in the middle than it is at the ends. Uh, and it's clear that as we come back around the circle, if we continue at 30 degree intervals, uh, the pendulum will move back through these same positions in those equal intervals, and that it will continue moving in this fashion as long as it maintains its energy.